afternoon. And uh, I'm going to say now welcome to uh, everyone both here in the theater. And there are about 20 of us in the theater, so it doesn't feel completely sterile <laughs> as some of these events do. Uh, in fact, at the last couple of assemblies, we've had about, the last assembly, we had about 75 people in here, and we had music. Uh, the rock band, as well as the headmaster singers, played on Monday. And so that felt so much more natural because it was as if we were in, in normal uh, operation. Uh, I will uh, introduce uh, our new fac faculty uh, it, it, by having uh, these slides behind me. Uh, we uh, typically will have these new faculty at uh, events like this or a coffee that we do typically at the beginning of the year. So Michelle Artisan is on my right and she's going to come just say hello and wave to everybody. If you come by the podium so that they can see you who are not uh, who are virtual right now. So Michelle joined uh, our staff uh, at the beginning of this year obviously and, and she is our school nurse and we're really pleased to have Michelle with us for a variety of reasons uh, and it even gave us the impetus to create a nurse's station in the new wellness center which makes a lot of sense when you think about a wellness center uh, having a nurse's station so uh, Michelle has a great deal of experience uh, having worked at Vanderbilt for a, a long time and and teaches nurses there and and has a doctorate in nursing so we thank you for being here All right, thank you. Uh, I just saw Joseph a little while ago he is a English teacher and theater teacher he grew up in Chattanooga and uh, went to Macaulay School so he's familiar with boys education and then went to Rollins College then went to London uh, spent a little time in New York uh, in the theater world and then went down to Virginia to Charlottesville where he uh, got another degree and also did some teaching and so we're really pleased to have Joseph and his wife uh, now in Nashville. Ed Caudell is someone I've known since 1994. In fact, he was one of the first people I hired at MBA and he was here for a number of years and then left and he and I have talked over the years about his coming back and we're really pleased to have Ed come back to MBA this year and teach math and just be part of the community in a variety of ways. Um, the next person is Michael Calavita. We decided to invest in music a little bit more this year, so we hired two music teachers to replace Matt Smith and, uh, in the choral area. And Michael uh, grew up in, in New Jersey, went to Washington and Lee University, uh, where he majored in music and neuroscience. Um, he then went to the University of Louisville to get a master's in music. Uh, he's involved in several things already at school. I saw him helping out with tennis the other day. He's a squash player and we, we have new squash courts in, in the Wellness Center so I bet he'll be involved with that as well. Uh, Henry Diggins is uh, the other music teacher we've hired. Uh, Henry grew up in Birmingham and then went uh, to uh, Tulane University where he also majored in music and then went to the University of Alabama and uh, got a master's degree in music and really pleased to have both of those music teachers in the program. He's also going to teach some classical guitar which he's skilled at as well. Will Eskew is a former MBA student and uh, I know Will extremely well. He, uh, he did a great job at MBA then went on to Chapel Hill where he majored in English and uh, minored in chemistry and he taught some at MBA over the summer so we knew he had teaching as an interest so he's a new intern here but he's teaching an English class <clears throat> working with a variety of sports programs and also working with the science department. Uh, Bo Henson, I just saw him out in the quad eating lunch. Bo's a fascinating guy, I grew up in Illinois, came down to Vanderbilt, was actually the roommate of uh, one of our chemistry teachers, Eric Armstrong. And uh, Bo uh, majored in uh, classical languages and theater at Vanderbilt. He uh, then did a variety of things uh, uh, over a number of years. He's a really fun teacher to watch because he, he just knows so much as evidenced by his being on uh, Jeopardy and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where he won $250,000, so he, you know he's had some success in, in that quiz bowl world. 
Uh, but but it, it, you see that in his teaching because he's so uh, aware of topics and, and he's fun to be around. Um, next person is <coughs> Jamie O'Neill who grew up uh, first in uh, Trinidad and then moved to Middle Tennessee when she was about eight and uh, she uh, has been in Tennessee since. Uh, she went across the street to college at Aquinas. She worked in the healthcare world for a long time, but she and her husband, who they both live in East Nashville with their boys, and they're really interested in um, athletics, and they started an athletic league in, in East Nashville, and she's going to help with our development of programs in the Wellness Center and also work with admissions and uh, other areas at school. Hayden is a graduate of the Charlotte Latin School and uh, then went on to Middlebury College where he majored in science and uh, in neuroscience and he was captain of the baseball team and he's another intern. You know, we like to find some young faculty to kind of inject some young blood into the school, so to speak, but also have the, these variety of interests that they have and, and, and have a strong influence on the boys in different ways. Um, Joanne Welch grew up in Nashville, went to Yume Fogg, then went to the University of Chicago, and went out to Seattle, where she taught math, then got a master's degree. She uh, also uh, coached the number two uh, math counts team in the country, and so she's working with our math programs and uh, teaching math. Ethan uh, grew up in Knoxville. He uh, went to Farragut High School, large public school in, in Knoxville, then went to Yale, where he did extremely well. And after Yale, he came down to Washington to uh, do some consulting work, but he, he was accepted at Cambridge University in England. And he went over to Cambridge for a year. He, uh, he rode at Cambridge, so he's helping with our crew team. He, when he finished Cambridge, he came back to the New York area where he worked with Julian Robertson's uh, educational fund for a year. And now he's doing a variety of things at MBA. He's helping with history. He's coaching crew. Uh, it just, again, a good example of having some really talented young people around the boys. And, uh, and, uh, and I work a lot with him as well uh, in my office. This year we have 810 students at MBA. It's the largest enrollment the school's ever had. Uh, not so much by design, but by the little attrition that we have and, and the interest in the school. We have about 100 and almost 50 faculty and staff. Just to give you some context, when I came to MBA in 1994, we had 530 students and we had about uh, 80 faculty and staff. So things have changed. and. Uh, it's partially, I think, the growth you, we've all seen in Nashville, but, but I think also the MBA has done really well as a school, and that, I think, is a, a sign of what's happened over the years. Uh, the campus uh, looks relatively the same, except that we have lots of tents around it, and there aren't quite as many students as we'd like to see on a daily basis, but I'm going to get to that topic in a minute. Uh, we're really excited about the new building, which uh, I am am eager to show to all of you. Uh, it'll be open, we hope, in, we're planning on its being open in January, and, and we hope to start the semester in there with a big event. And, and uh, in fact, uh, Ethan y Young, whom I introduced a moment ago, is working with me on seeing if we could get uh, Michael Phelps to come speak, because he's very interested in wellness topics, and we want to have a big event when we open that building that, that there's an event center in there that seats 2,000 people. Uh, we also have done some c great construction work at our property at Long Mountain. Quickly, I wanted to say, though, uh, that um, the seventh and eighth grades really should be about fundamentals, about learning how to be responsible, about how to be organized. And I think it's so, some of the secret sauce to MBA that with a lot of our 90 plus percent of our students come in the seventh grade. And it's, it's at that point where I think they learn a lot of their responsibilities and, and fundamentals. And that's why we emphasize English and Latin and grammar and a lot of structure in those years. We're also really pleased to see how the advisory system has evolved, particularly in the seventh and eighth grades. You know, just a few years ago, we decided to have the, them grouped together as seventh and eighth graders, and that has been a really positive 
uh, change in terms of the mentoring possibilities, in terms of people knowing one another in community in smaller ways. Uh, the story of COVID certainly has affected the school in lots of ways, but we feel as if we're navigating that well. Uh, the, few con the few positive cases we have had have not occurred at school. They've, they've come from the home uh, uh, where parents or others have been around people who have been positive. We've done a good job with the uh, contact tracing, and we're just hopeful that we'll keep moving. We look at the school as one community, 7 through 12. So when we meet in this room for assemblies each week, the junior school students are here. Whenever we think about the school, we think about it as a unit. Uh, although it's clear that the 7th and 8th graders you know, do slightly different things, but they're part of the whole. And we think that's a really important part of MBA. We emphasize care and we emphasize the culture in a lot of ways in MBA believing that you know the more boys understand that whatever you do it should be appreciated whether you are someone who's going to sing an assembly on Monday or play out on the football field or on the hockey team or you're a debater it's all important and I think that is also a very important part of the school and I think the boys appreciate that and understand that issue uh, parents night is scheduled for next Tuesday for the seventh and eighth grades it will be virtual uh, we will have a, an opening program where I will speak as well as Ms. Stewart, and uh, then we will have individual videos uh, that all the teachers will do, both as advisors and as teachers of your sons for the different classes, and you can log on to the Scholar uh, program and, and listen to all of them asynchronously. So you don't have to sit in your house from 7 to whenever it is. You can just do it at a time that's convenient for you. There are some advantages to some of this, these changes. Uh, finally, I was going to say that uh, we are, you're going to get a newsletter this afternoon that will tell you that the 7th grade will be back on a regular basis beginning on Tuesday of next week. And my plan is to have all the grades back over the next few weeks. I don't want to lock myself down to a particular date, and I don't want to tell you exactly what grades yet, because there are lots of lobbyists out there for good reasons. But we were just trying to be smart and strategic and make sure we meet all the mitigations. I mean, simple things like how we do lunch, we've got to just sort that out. But people have a really good attitude about it, and, uh, and I'm very hopeful that we'll see that progress. Lastly, I just hope you'll continue to talk to your sons about their own aspirations about you know what they want to do this year what they want to do this next summer what they want to do in five years time it is not too early for you just to casually talk about colleges I don't think you ought to put any pressure on your sons but I think lots of things you should be talking to them about about who they are I was met with a student earlier today who did a film this summer and he wants to show the film uh, at school. Uh, I, I met with a couple of students yesterday that made face shields for all the faculty, 300 of them on a 3D printer. And I think it is really great when you see students take off and have their own interest and find a rhythm for what really excites them. And, and I think whether it's athletics, whether it's debate or music or whatever the area, we just want to help keep pushing them. And, and I know you're doing it and, and hope we can continue to do it well together. I'm going to now ask Ms. Stewart to come up and she'll talk to you a little bit about the 7th and 8th grades. Well, I appreciated Mr. Julia's introduction to all the faculty, but he left out one important fact. When we added Joanne Welch to the math department, that was lady number four. So we have a math department with four uh, women, and so I'm quite proud of that. And um, so uh, we certainly welcome Joanne to our mask team. Well, first of all, I want to welcome our moms, um, our, new, our new moms uh, to MBA. We have 123 boys in the class of, 200, of 2026, and seven boys have joined the class of 2025. We greatly appreciate and value all that our moms do for us. We need you. Okay, and we really treasure your involvement. 
And this morning, Mr. Joya came on campus with his dogs, and I was listening to his story, and that's a, that's a really fun thing to watch, and I enjoyed it too. But he, he pointed out something or reminded me of something that um, we see every day, is that we have little boys. Seventh and eighth grade boys can still be little boys. And uh, they change a lot. And this time of the year, I feel like I need to kind of uplift that for our parents, particularly you moms, because that transition from sixth grade to ninth grade is huge. It's like the first three years of their life. And this time, they're not so cute and cuddly, OK? And they smell different, and they sound different. And unfortunately, they don't like you as much right now, OK? Or they will not like you as much for a while. But they'll come back. Um, my little boy is 38. And every once in a while, I get a picture of him with his daughter. And I say, payback time. But um, they do come back. And so I do have a heart for the moms during this time. And first of all, I'll just pledge that we are in this together. So for those two years, some of you are out there, I see you, uh, you don't have your battle scars out yet, but I know that we all went through that. And so we're here for that part too. The second part I wanna talk about is just MBA right now. You know, there are a lot of things that go around in our community about MBA. These reframes like uh, nothing ever changes, okay? It's always been done like that. Well, during the time of coronavirus, we've been, push to make some changes and explore new ways of doing our old things. And while we have more screens in our classrooms, the faces in those boxes still belong to us. And I promise you, uh, we have not given up anything in our effort to provide the very best academic program for your son. We have evaluated, streamlined, and reinvented, and reinvented some of our old lessons. We have found our core of all of our programs and attached our anchors there. Our competitions may look different, but our teams are together. We now, for now, we wear masks and we follow the arrows and the dots to keep us safe. We are doing all that we can to ultimately, like Mr. Joya said, be together on campus. Some of you ask how your boys are doing. They're doing really, really well, okay? Uh, they wear their mask. They follow the arrows. Um, they have only been challenged by being, you know, six feet apart. And they really, really try. It's not like they're trying to jump on anybody. They're really trying. But it's hard to talk. You know, they haven't been together. And so I'm, I'm really encouraged by their spirit of community. I want to encourage you to uh, and support you in that. A lot of the things that we normally do to connect with each other, we've had to do on Zoom calls and things like that. Uh, we are definitely committed and want you to be part of MBA. I encourage all of our new moms to jump in. I've been here, this is my 11th year, can you believe that? There's a place for everybody. Uh, and we look forward to building our community in these different ways. We've learned a lot of good stuff. Yesterday, I was running through Massey, beating my chest, literally, because I had finally learned how to quickly make a video, okay? And it took a lot of trial and error, and Mary, I made seven for you, I only sent you one, but um, I was just determined that somewhere, some way, I was gonna learn how to do this, okay? And so I see that a lot, and I think that this new, new time is really giving us, giving us an opportunity to learn new ways of doing things. So your boys are doing really well. So our start is different, but it's no less very good. As we work toward the time when we can all be together on the hill, I think the big important word in that is that we're doing it together, and I see your boys doing that. Mr. Joy already told you about next week and the following week when we're gonna have open houses. Uh, we're gonna see you for parent conferences too. And we plan on that to be you know, either in person or online and probably giving you the option to do that. But we wanna do that. Uh, we, kind of go through our calendars all the time and not thinking about what we can cancel or eliminate, but how can we modify that? And so, again, I thank you for all that you're doing, and I wanted to particularly thank you today for all that you do at home and the time that we've had to be in remote learning. I know that's difficult, okay? I heard some stories this morning. Um, that's hard, but our boys are doing really well. Um, I, I see them on their chats. I know that behind all of that, you've been there. 
And again, we're all working together to get everybody back here. So thank you for what you do. Please know that I'm here. You, uh, I think all of you know where to find me. Um, and I'm just very glad that we can finally have a few people in person. And for everybody else out there, welcome to 2020 on the Hill. permission to take this mask off so anyway don't turn me in um, hello and I just want to welcome all the junior school moms who are joining us today from home my name is Paige Hill and I'm delighted to serve as your mother's club president this year a bit about me because I was told that I should this is my seventh year as an MBA parent I am married to Travis Hill and we have two sons Pierce who is a junior here and Grayson, who is a 2020 graduate of MBA, and he is now a college freshman at Wake Forest. My past life included practicing law, working with an anti-human trafficking nonprofit, and most recently working for a local interior designer. I will have to say, though, that this role as Mother's Club president is proving to be the most interesting yet. Uh, I would like to introduce to you my friend and your president-elect, Christy Skeeters, who's here today. Christy is married to Jonathan, and she has two boys, Ryan, who is a senior, I'm sorry, Mason, who is a senior, and Ryan, who is in eighth grade. Um, Christy worked at Vanderbilt in Human Resources for many years, and she still volunteers there even today. Christy has basically served in every imaginable volunteer role in the Mother's Club. Um, it's been so much fun to work with Christy these past few months, and I know you'll be in great hands next year. I am thrilled to be here today at our virtual class luncheon to briefly touch on what the Mother's Club at MBA is all about. I'll be honest, it feels a little weird to be here and not have a lot of smiling faces out there. Um, I miss that, I, I miss my MBA Mom friends, I uh, miss the opportunity right now to meet new moms face to face. However, I know this is temporary and I can't wait until we're all together in the same room. So a little bit about the Mother's Club. We are fun, at least we think we are. <laughs> I think we're fun. We are a motley group of imperfect moms um, with different backgrounds. We're from different zip codes, um, different parenting styles and philosophies. But the one thing we all have in common is we love and adore our sons. I love this quote by the late artist Pablo Picasso. He said, when I was a child, my mother said to me, if you are a soldier, you will become a general. If you are a monk, you will become the Pope. Instead, I was a painter and I became Picasso. Much like Picasso's mother, we all believe um, in the very best for our boys. We have hopes, dreams, and aspirations for them, but in the end, we want them to find their own unique path, and they will. A personal example is my older son took art here at MBA his freshman year, honestly, just to cross it off the requirements list and be done with it after his freshman year. But what he found there was a subject that made him come alive. And now he is pursuing, I don't know, it makes me kind of teary. Um, he is pursuing a minor in studio art in college now. Um, and I give full credit to encouraging teachers like Catherine Hollyfield, who um, just believed in him and fostered that love of art. At MBA, the boys are exposed to a wide range of enrichments, and you never know what will spark something in your son. Honestly, I'm a little jealous that you have so many years ahead of you at MBA. I hope you will find, as I have, um, that MBA not only builds our boys into great men, but that it also welcomes the moms of these fine young boys to come and be a part of the journey here. Beyond loving our boys, the purpose of the Mother's Club is threefold. It is to enhance the partnership between students, parents, faculty, and the administration. It is to raise money that enriches the school beyond the school budget and to promote a sense of community where moms are welcomed on campus to give of their time and talent. All of these are important, but you can't raise money or foster partnerships without first building community, which leads me to our theme for this year, 
building community safely. Our goal has always been to build community. It is the pillar of who we are and what we do. During these unusual times, we are charged with building community. We will just focus on doing it safely. Please know that I recognize this season we are in is hard. Um, to not admit that is, is not being real. Um, I know many families have suffered and are still suffering. Hybrid school can be hard. Um, modified or canceled athletics is hard. Having enough food for at-home learning days in my house is hard. But today I'm asking each of you to lean into the hard with me. Um, as moms, we know how to do this. Uh, we were born for hard. But please hear me when I say there is much fun to be had. And there are amazing NBA time-honored traditions and celebrations and events that I am confident will happen this year. But in the meantime, as we focus on the process of bringing and keeping our boys on campus full time, let's commit to joyfully getting through the hard together. As you have probably noticed, the Mother's Club communicates a lot. I promise we are intentional with our communications and we try to space out the emails, but sometimes there's just a lot to say. Um, we have many fun and safe events still in the works for this year such as new diversity and inclusion initiatives, virtual book clubs, um, an all mothers club read, guest experts on raising boys, and many more. You can stay on top of all things mothers club um, by looking at the following. On Wednesday's Brad's newsletter, um, there is a link in the bottom to a mothers club page and there is a newsletter that I update weekly. Um, the main uh, MBA website, you can go to that and find the Mother's Club page there. Um, the most important thing there I want to point out is that is where you go to volunteer. Um, you will see lots of volunteer now buttons. Click on one of those and, and um, have at it and volunteer as much as you want. Um, I want to thank Suzanne Stewart. She keeps our website up to date and Laura Green who handles um, all the volunteers this year. The Mother's Club is also on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Deb Lawson does a fantastic job of um, keeping all of those current and up to date. I want to take a moment to thank the moms this year who are serving in leadership positions. I am clearly biased, but I think we have the most dynamic group of moms this year. Y'all are thoughtful, you're kind, you're energetic, and you're willing to imagine, reimagine, and then reimagine again the events as um, things rapidly change. I've been so encouraged by each of you this year, and I can't thank you enough for that. I would like to quickly recognize Beth Coast and Tanya Stevens for helping with this luncheon from afar. Under normal circumstances, they would have been here today. Beth is our class mother coordinator this year, and Tanya serves in the step up role. These ladies have been and will continue to be instrumental in facilitating community within each grade. They are working closely with the amazing class moms who you will hear from next. Please feel free to reach out to any of them at any time if you have any suggestions or ideas on ways your grade might safely connect this fall. In closing, I just want to say mom to mom, soak it up. We all know the old adage, the more you put into something, the more you get out. And I am telling y'all this rings true um, as a volunteer at MBA. I have met some of the most delightful women during volunteerships, women who have truly enriched my life. These are moms I might never have known otherwise. Building community truly starts with each of us. You won't regret showing up. Because take it from me in the blink of an eye, you will have just dropped off your son at college and you will long for more moments with him at his beloved school. So, thank y'all for listening today. Thank you for tuning in. And up next are some of the fabulous seventh and eighth grade class moms. If y'all wanna come up here, you can. Uh, this group is eager, they are talented, and they are genuinely excited to serve in this role this year. So, Highland and Elizabeth, I'll let y'all start. Wow. I, I'm 
I mean, I'm kind of a little bit in shock that we're here at MVA, that I finally have a boy that can go to MVA. Mm -hmm. This is so fun. Yes. And I, even with my mask, I'm smiling. I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> but I am smiling. But I'm one of the seventh grade moms, along with Elizabeth Hasselback, and then we have two other moms, Emily Hardcastle and Ansel Klein, who um, will do the next luncheon, I guess. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just want to say that we were so glad and we're so thankful for letting us get to do some of the traditions and we got the t-shirt out and I hope every little boy got one and that that was fun for us and I know my son was so excited to get that that NBA t-shirt that I know he'll have probably forever and um, so thank you for letting us do that and thank you for letting us be here and if your son did not get one please contact one of us or someone in the office and there is a t-shirt for everybody so right. thank you so much well done Highland I know your smile through those eyes <laughs> um, we're so thankful to be here we um, obviously are new so we probably have as much um, you know question and questions as many of you out there as seventh grade moms but feel free to reach out to us if you have them if we have answers we will get right back to you um, if we don't which we may not we will find one of our um, great teammates here in the Mother's Club to, to find answers from. I think Paige, what a lovely way to just invite us all in. I think the idea of leaning um, into this time, which has been hard and beautiful both, um, is great because we can lean on all of you. So we will be leaning on all of you as we step into this role. And we're so thankful um, to Mr. Joya and Fran for your leadership during this time of uncertainty. It's been clear. And that has been so helpful for us as moms because we love our boys and we love all of your boys and we just want the best for them and it's been amazing to have such strong leadership during this time of uncertainty so um, community has looked amazing and different <laughs> right Paige so thank you for just giving us permission to even admit that and say that we're walking through this in a new way um, t-shirts are great because it was one of the first traditional things that we had to do in a new way but still made the boys feel linked in and part of it all so we're so full of gratitude for that um, our main goal has been, and we're both shaking up here just so you know, because we're so excited about Tuesday. <laughs> so we're just going to smile right through our mask because that is a joy. And we, our hope is that everyone um, can work together continually to fulfill what Mr. Joy has said is the goal to have all the boys together on campus well and safely. So um, as class mothers, our goal is to continue to have safe events when possible. And that our main mission, we're already a part of it. We get to link up, lean in, and lean on one another to make Mr. Joy's goals and the school's mission to get all the boys here safely possible. So we are already in action doing that, and that's great. In the meantime, until all of those events can happen, we're here for your questions and concerns. Um, you can find us on Instagram at MBA 2026 Parents, um, on Facebook at MBA Class of 2026. And you can find all of our cell phones, um, addresses, stop by. We're here for you um, with our questions and yours, and we'll be sure to get back to you. And if anyone feels like they just want to step into some volunteer roles, there are so many great opportunities. We're just thankful to be class moms with you um, and Ansel and Emily. So we're here, and we're thankful for it from the bottom of our hearts. And joining us up next from the eighth grade is Ann Trainer. Thank you for letting us be a part of such a lovely group. We're thankful. Mask off, feels pretty good. <laughs> I'm Ann Trainer. I am mom to a 10th grade MBA boy, an 8th grade MBA boy, and a 5th grade boy who aspires to be here as well. I also happen to be married to one, and so I have a little bit of a lifetime of experience in this, in this pocket. Um, I am one of the 8th grade moms with Jill Tidwell, Clark Harwell, and Nina Lindley, and we are so happy to be able to guide or to get together with everybody when the time is right. Um, I know this has been an awkward start to the year for all of us. Um, we're especially looking forward to getting to meet the several new eighth grade moms who have um, new students with us this year. We've been in touch with them and it's been nice to connect that way as well. Um, right now, clearly just as with so many other things going on at MBA, the eighth grade um, events are on pause. And um, we still want to be here for each other, though. So if you'd like to be part of a small group within the 8th grade moms, please let us know. Um, our contact information is on the MBA website. And um, once the boys are back on campus, we'll be able to proceed with those events and with more contact with each other, which will be welcome, I'm sure, for all of us. 
And um, in, the, in the meantime, don't hesitate to call or text us if you have questions or if there are any other um, ideas that pop up. We'd love to be um, in, a, in a space to generate those thoughts with you and to work on all of that. Um, follow us on social media. Um, keep up the good work that, it's, that you're doing, mom and these boys. It is not easy. And we are, um, I think every one of us is part of a crew to be reckoned with. So <laughs> um, good luck to all of you in, your, in the rest of your day. And next up is the uh, spaghetti supper chairs. Thanks. Okay, you are about to hear from the dynamic duo of Kara Cruz and Mary Sensing, who are chairing this year's Spaghetti Supper. I cannot begin to tell y'all how hard they have worked to reinvent um, our biggest fundraiser and the most time-honored tradition at MBA. They have been working on the 76th annual Spaghetti Supper for a year now, and I am so thankful for all that they have done. I promise you will want to support the Spaghetti Supper if for no other reason than Mary and Kara are two of the nicest people you will, you will ever meet. Um, and it's also a treat to have Anne Elizabeth and Mary here as well. So thank you and here's Mary Zinsing. Kara's gonna come up at the end, so just saving the best for last here. Uh, my name is Mary Sensing, and just a little bit, I have a son who graduated and is a freshman at Vanderbilt, and I have a current junior. Kara and I are chairing the annual Spaghetti Supper this year. It is the 76th and will be held on October the 2nd. Spaghetti Supper is a friend raiser, it's a community builder, and it is, as Paige mentioned, the largest Mother's Club fundraiser. The money raised directly impacts each student and assists the administration in providing exceptional experiences for our boys. Historically, Spaghetti Supper has been a time to gather with friends and families and the MBA community at large to share a meal before the homecoming game. The weeks leading up to the Spaghetti Supper are filled with special events that bring the NBA community together to honor the school's past and to celebrate its future. This year, we've had to make a few modifications. Lately, I've thought about a story that I heard from someone who chaired this event many years ago. Families would cook spaghetti in their homes following a very specific recipe and they would bring it to school in large pots where they would serve the spaghetti to the community. That has changed, I will note, to never fear our fantastic service, food service department cooks our spaghetti now. But back to this story, they would drive their pots of spaghetti to the school, load them up in a wagon to take over to the gym. Well, this year, in this instance, the wagon toppled over and spaghetti spilled all over Montgomery Bell Avenue. I can only imagine the shock, the panic, and the laughter. I thought about it a lot, and Kara and I can somewhat relate to their story. Our efforts following the plans of those who went before us came to a jarring halt in March, and it felt like everything fell apart, sort of like that spaghetti on Montgomery Bell Avenue. But with Paige's leadership, we decided to make the best of some challenging circumstances and began reimagining the events around Spaghetti Supper. We really have some great initiatives to share with you all. And we're excited, very excited to be able to tell you that so many of the traditions, the things that we know and love about MBA and Spaghetti Supper will remain the same. We are serving spaghetti it's just takeout version. We have student design t-shirts for sale. We have fabulous MBA red mums for sale. We have a bake sale, it's just a little different. We, have, we are continuing to partner with Second Harvest and we have a fantastic team driving that initiative. We have come up with some fun ways and some things to do for the boys on campus. 
And new for this year, we have a website, and it's pretty awesome. And we've worked really hard to get all the information that you could possibly need about Spaghetti Supper and the weeks leading up to Spaghetti Supper on the website. So a few things that I just want to highlight before I have a few people coming up. Um, Spaghetti Supper is carry-out only this year. All that information is on the website. Ordering, pickup, all those details. Our sons will be required to sell five tickets, but there are lots of opportunities to donate more. And I'm excited to introduce you right now to Mary Pierce, who's going to talk to you about Second Harvest and that initiative. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary and Kara, for all of your work. There have been so many changes, but for Second Harvest, the only change that we have in the food drive is the increased need in Nashville. So between the devastating tornadoes that hit Nashville in March and the continued financial impact of COVID-19, families who never expected to seek food assistance are contacting Second Harvest each week. This time last year, Second Harvest distributed an average of 600,000 pounds of food to needy families. This year, they are distributing 1 million pounds of food weekly. That's a 40% increase. Simultaneously, however, grocery store donations are down by 30% and food drive donations are at a standstill. So our committee of Noel Kinzer, Sean Hale, Ebony Heron, and myself see this as an incredible opportunity for MBA to step up and lead our community in making 2020 the largest food drive yet. We believe our boys can achieve 100% participation, and we hope that you will encourage them in being creative in how they collect food and donations for Second Harvest. They'll be hearing more about ways to do this, like asking for a jar of peanut butter from a neighbor when they sell a spaghetti supper ticket, or organizing a small food drive on your block. And our team is also working with Mrs. Stewart and Mr. Sawyer in the high school for a never seen before event should we reach that 100% participation goal. Individually and by advisory, the boys will be well rewarded for their efforts and our prize patrol has arranged gift baskets uh, stocked with lots of NBA merchandise from the Big Red store for our top winners as well as some Chick-fil-A gift cards for the winning advisories. We're also working to finalize some great incentives for the boys that involve coveted opportunities in this COVID age. Stay tuned for more details, but please mark your calendars for the following dates. Tuesday through Friday, September 22nd to the 25th are the food drop-off days at MBA from 7 to 8.30 each morning. Friday, September 25th is our peanut butter day. And the donation button on the website that Mary mentioned is live now, so you can go ahead and start making donations. And please add an extra jar to a peanut butter to your grocery cart when you're shopping the next few weeks. So thank you so much, and we look forward to making this a historic year for Second Harvest. And now we'll hear from Ann Elizabeth McIntosh for the bake sale. Hi there, I'm Anne Elizabeth McIntosh Tachek, long name. Um, I have a son that graduated in 2019, so for you seventh grade moms, I can attest that they do make it through it. Um, I also have a stepson, Cabe Tachek, who is a junior here. So I'm thrilled to be able to stay on campus and continue to volunteer with the Mothers Club. Um, I'm excited this year to be working with Angela Bosselman, Caroline Lindsay, and Andra Perkerson. Um, just as other things this year had to um, be changed, we were really excited to get to reimagine the bake sale. And so what we have done is intro we're introducing a nod to Nashville care package. Um, everything in the box is local to Nashville. Nashville top Toffee Company Toffee Popcorn, Grab the Gold Bar, Loveless Cafe Beef Jerky, Pasta from MBA um, Family the Aarons from the Pasta Shop, Custom Iced Cookies, Custom Frosted Flex Cups, and some fun napkins. Good Vibes Only Nashville. Um, we are really excited about this. We believe that this can be sent to your friends, your family, your boys and your girls in college. Buy one for your house, send one to your parents. Um, we are really excited that we came up with something to really show the love of local Nashville 
while keeping a piece of what we love about sending MBA out when we do that with the bake sale goodies. Um, boxes will be $45 if you want to pick it up and add some things or a note to it for yourself, or we will ship it for you for $55. Pickup will be on October 3rd um, here on campus, and um, if you have any questions, everything's going to be listed out on that uh, website, mbaspaghettisupper.com. So, thank you. I'd like to introduce Kara Cruz now. Um, just as it's already been said, Kara and Mary have been wonderful to work with, and um, it's just going to be a great year. So, thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Kara Cruz, and I want to reiterate what Mary said and tell you that she and I are delighted that your sons and your families will be a part of the 76th Annual Spaghetti Supper. It is my pleasure to share with you a couple of ways that Spaghetti Supper's beloved bake sale have been reimagined. Our bake sale team has planned two special treat days for all of the boys to enjoy during homecoming week. We knew that they would miss gathering in the gym and shopping for goodies with their punch cards. So thanks to a generous sponsor, the boys will be treated to a sweet day and a savory day during Spirit Week. The bake sale team did not forget about the parents, grandparents, and friends of NBA who love to purchase baked goods in support of Spaghetti Supper. Dessert Designs by Leland, a beloved local bakery, has partnered with Bake Sale to offer curated boxes. We knew you would have a difficult time choosing between the chocolate and caramel packages, so don't worry, you don't have to choose, we're gonna offer both. I encourage you to visit the Spaghetti Supper website to place your orders. You may pick up your bakery boxes homecoming week at the Wilson parking garage, or for a small del delivery charge, the bake sale team will deliver most local orders. Normally at this luncheon, we do a drawing for a door prize, and even though you're not here with us in the theater today, we put all of the seventh and eighth grade boys' names in a hat, and one lucky mom is going to receive an MBA bake sale dessert design box that we will deliver right to you. It will have a cake, a half dozen cookies, and a half dozen brownies. So, congratulations to Tate Johnson's mom. Her name is Susan, and um, Tate is one of our new seventh graders. And I've got all your information here, and I'm going to pass it on to the bake sale committee, and they'll be in touch. As you've heard, Spaghetti Supper is an enduring tradition that honors MBA's past and celebrates its future. Please reach out to Mary, me, or any of the Mother's Club volunteers with your questions. And don't forget to check out the Spaghetti Supper website. Thanks so much, and roll red. And it's my pleasure to introduce Julia and Jill regarding the Big Red Store. Before they come up here, I just want to say that these ladies could run a Fortune 500 company, and they probably did in a previous life. Um, Julia Gall, Stephanie Pease, and Jill Stroud are the chairs this year, and they have been working tirelessly since June to order all the fun things that your boys come home and say that they want. Um, and Julia and Jill have some exciting things to announce today. So, thank you. I'm Julia Gall, and this is Jill Stroud, and Stephanie Peace is um, not with us today. We also have three step-ups, Edith Kirkland, Beth Kirkland, and Kitsy Hales. And um, we're just so excited to um, show, us, show you a little bit of what's in the store. And like we've, you know, everyone's been saying, you know, things are a little bit different this year. But um, for you new moms out there, um, we'd like just to tell you who we are. I know the choir here may already have heard this, but the Big Red Store is your one-shop stop for just um, athletic wear, daily wear, fan gear. Um, there's just something for about anyone they, uh, in the Big Red Store. We have a lot of fantastic brands um, and unique styles. We have the Under Armour Nike, the Columbia, things like that. Now, even though you may not be able to be on campus very much, you can still wear your MBA gear out in the community and really show your love for MBA. So, um, but when can you actually um, see the big red store and the Lowry store is closed right now but we have great exciting news that we're going to be able to have um, pop-up sales now in the Lowry garage so um, instead of uh, you know uh, shopping online now you'll be able to shop physically in the Lowry garage on Fridays starting September 11th so um, that will be migrating through um, um, the in communication on the website um, 
soon. So, but uh, also, so that's that's in the Lowry Garage, and then also you can shop online 24/7. We all know about <laughs> internet shopping through these years, these uh, months of COVID. So um, the Big Red Store is alive and well online. It's mbabigredstore.com. And also, just why shop us? I mean, this is, uh, we have a lot of reasons for you to stop by and see us online or in the Lowry Garage. First of all, we like to see you. But also, the merchandise, we are tax-free. We offer local pickup on Fridays. We also can ship items to you. Um, we can provide even personal service if you have questions or you have something that you just can't find. And things are returnable. So um, please reach out to us with what you need. Um, like we said before, you can find us on the MBA website. The, we have a link at the bottom of the web page, the home web page to our online store. We also have an Instagram, mbabigredstore.com. I mean, NBA Big Red Store. And our website is nbabigredstore.com. So, did, did I miss anything, Jill? No. Okay. Jill's actually wearing one of our new hoodies. So, um, come check us out, and we just appreciate your time. Thanks. In my opinion, the Sunshine Committee of the Mother's Club does some of the most meaningful work of the Mother's Club. Uh, we want to be a community that cares for one another and that is what the Sunshine Committee does. Um, this is Kisha Campbell's second year on this committee and I'm so grateful for her heart and for her leadership and for the rest of her team, Jennifer Adams, Kathy Billings, and Laurel Ditto. And here is Kisha. Thank you. Kisha. Hello, good morning. I'm Kisha Campbell, um, and as she said, I'm here to represent the Sunshine Committee. Um, Jennifer Adams and Kathy Billings and Laurel Ditto would love just to say hello to all of you also. Our focus is the MBA students, the families, the um, faculty and staff, and we offer encouragement and support um, to the students who are injured in sports, who are dealing with um, those that are dealing with long-term illnesses, who are having surgery, who may be walking through cancer or other um, longer, other medical challenges. We, we also get to celebrate births and weddings of the faculty and staff. And um, we try to do these things through words of encouragement, through handwritten notes, through um, flowers, meals, small gifts. Um, it can kind of vary according to different situations that are going on. Um, and we need your help too. We would love to be able to, um, to hear from the community. Um, you can always reach out to us and let us know. On the, um, on the um, website, there is a link through the Sunshine Committee. You also can contact any of us directly or um, Fran Stewart and the class moms also know how to get in touch with us. And um, please know, the one thing we do want you to know is that everything that's shared is confidential. And so as much as we would honor and um, protect our stories, these are your stories too. And so we want to honor and protect that. So please know that is all confidential. And um, it really is an exciting committee to be a part of. Last year we had the opportunity to serve um, over 50 families on our um, campus last year as well as get to be a part of welcoming kind of mid-year our new students. We had over 30 new students, 8th through 12th grade, and the new faculty also. So um, it's a, this year may have some new challenges that we will be, um, but we are excited just to, um, to be able to be encouragement on campus. So I'd like to introduce the Art Show co-chairs, Kelly Dillon and Elizabeth Wade. Thank you. Okay, so the terrific trio of Kelly Dillon, Martha Elrod, and Elizabeth Wade, they are the masterminds behind NBA's first ever virtual art show. Um, they have spent countless hours researching how to make this work. I mean, as of a few days ago, we have the most artists who have ever applied to an NBA art show. So we're really excited, and Kelly and Elizabeth are here with us today. Thank you. We're missing our third um, cohort, Kelly 
I mean, I'm sorry, Mar <laughs> Martha Elrod, but she has been so helpful in planning this past um, school year as well. Yes, and we also have three step ups who have done an amazing job. They've been so helpful. Uh, Mimi Gannon, Kelly Shirley, and Wiley Franks. So we miss you here today, but thank you. So I'm Kelly Dillon, and we wanted to tell you just a little bit about the MBA 2020 virtual art show. We are super, super excited that we are still able to have an art show. Traditionally, um, every fall, MBA hosts about 65 or so artists in a gallery-style show in the Davis Gallery. This year, like many things, it's going to look a little bit different. But, um, as we said, we're very excited because we have had such a tremendous response from artists applying, not just local and regionally, but also we have artists from California, from Colorado, so we're excited to bring in maybe a little new flavor to the show. Um, the dates of the virtual show are November 12th through November 15th. Um, what we're most excited about is our new website, um, mbaartshow.com, and this Friday we'll be announcing the approximately 65 plus um, artists, um, the lineup, so we hope y'all will start um, becoming familiar with our website and um, we're going to be updating it throughout the next couple of months with um, some artist interviews, possibly some studio visits, um, and then a sneak peek of each artist. Yes, so the success of this year's show depends wholly on all of you going to visit the website, find a comfy chair, get some good snacks, hunker down, um, like Julia said, you can shop 24-7, <laughs> starting at 5 o'clock, Thursday, yes. November 12th. That's kind of our opening, our opening, opening night. night. Our opening yes. night. But um, really, truly, so please pass it on to friends and family, even family who live out of state. Again, that's another a positive. We're able to reach a larger audience um, November 12th, Thursday night. Through are, Sunday midnight. Yes. And we're on Instagram? We're on Instagram and Facebook, and the more y'all can share and like, the more hopefully the general population will know about it. Um, and we ship, the artists will be either shipping or dropping off, so if you have a family member that wants to support the school in that way, they'll receive their art as far away as they as there can be. So, And all proceeds um, do benefit the Mother's Club and the Fine Arts Department, so it's a great way to give back um, to Catherine and her teachers. That's right. And one other thing that we're working with Catherine Hollyfield on, we hope will be part of the show, is we might have a small section of young MBA alum artists showcasing some of their work. And there's one in particular who was um, very much influenced by our visiting artist last year, who was Logan Hicks. So again, there are all sorts of really new and exciting things that this virtual version can bring. All right, thank you. Oh, and we would like to introduce Kathy Crum. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the Poinsettia sales team is comprised of some amazing junior class moms, Allie Davis, Kathy Crum, and Jenny Linderman. And they've been busy getting ready to roll this sale out later this month. The fundraiser directly benefits the junior class in order to put on the junior senior prom who doesn't love poinsettias and who doesn't love proms. So support this fundraiser, please. And here's Kathy. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kathy Crum, and Allie Davis and Jenny Linderman and I are in charge of the poinsettia sale. And we, we only have a few changes we're going to have contactless pickup in the um, garage where you just drive by and we put the poinsettias in your car. But I wanted to touch a little bit on how beautiful these poinsettias are. They're, they're full and they're gorgeous. They come in three different sizes and um, uh, two different colors. And um, then we also have amaryllis, which are not yet in bloom, but when they bloom, they are exquisite. So um, last year, the senior class did not get to have prom, so we want to really make this 
a community-wide, I mean, it can be anybody in Nashville to support this fundraiser. And you won't be disappointed. The, the flowers are gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, last but not least, um, Christy Skeeters is going to come up and tell you a little bit um, about the group uh, on campus, Moms in Prayer. Just want to highlight one other group today, and that's our Moms in Prayer. Once a month, MBA mothers gather to pray for our boys, the school, faculty, staff, and administration. Ninth grade mother, Sarah Englert, is heading this group up this year. The first gathering is planned to be Monday, September 14th from 8 to 9 a.m. Brooke Keene has graciously offered to host in her backyard to allow for social distancing. This group will continue to meet throughout the year on the second Monday of every month. The next couple dates are October 12th and November 9th. You can look for future dates on the Mother's Club calendar. Your participation is completely up to your own comfort level. This is simply a way to get to know other mothers and to support the MBA community in prayer. Thank you. Okay. Yes, that would actually be great. Well, good afternoon again, Paige. Thank you, and thanks to all of you, and obviously to those not with us but watching virtually. I wanted to express my appreciation, of course, for the Mother's Club, and I wanted to tell you some thoughts I had while the speakers were up. Uh, first, uh, I was here when they delivered that spaghetti that Mary talked about at MBA, and, I, and I'm sure on my grave tombstone it'll say, he's the guy that changed the spaghetti supper. Um, I also thought about the school store when you all came up, because we are going to have a magnificent new school store in the Wellness Center that I think you will love visiting. And I also thought about the Sunshine Committee because I called a mother this morning who was in Atlanta. Her husband has just had a kidney transplant, and she expressed her appreciation uh, this morning in that conversation for the ways in which the Sunshine Committee has uh, helped her and her family out during this time. And the last thing I thought about was the art show and how much I personally appreciated having the artist on campus the last couple of years. I love seeing all the works by Black Lerat around the campus, from Socrates down the garage to Picasso as a young man over uh, by the fine art, in the fine arts area. And, and I bought a painting of Logan Hicks last year, and while I was in my own isolation for a hundred days, I looked at that painting every day. So, you know, it's just great to uh, see the, the fruits and, and hard work of the Mother's Club, and we're delighted to do this luncheon today virtually. We will have another one for the high school uh, tomorrow, and we look forward to uh, seeing you all often. Thank you very much. <laughs>